We have to take you live to court where sentencing arguments in the case of the convicted rapist Nicholas Ninao have started and he's on the stand. Let's take a listen. That was the last. I never really had intention of, of spending money, but that was the last I could scrape together in my house and to see if I could make a plan. And yeah, that whole entire day I used. And then we would get to the day, which is now the following day of the incident, which my fiance told me I should go to work. I dressed up for work and everything. I was planning on going, in all honesty, to go and fix things. But I was coming down and I didn't really feel in a good position to go and speak to my manager. I was very depressed and I was very um, upset with myself. So therefore, instead of going to work, I went straight to Silverton where I picked up drugs again from my dealer. I couldn't find anyone to take credit from. So I managed to find an old dealer of mine which I managed to take credit from. And he gave me on credit. From there, I went straight to the Dross restaurant. And that's where I started my drinking spree. Um, I, I apologize, my lord, I asked what happened then. I arrived, I, I wasn't sure about the time, it must have been about midday. I arrived at the restaurant. Um, I was inside, but it was very hot. I remembered ordering a castle draft and going straight to the toilet to take my first line. Um, I was desperate to come up, so I went and I quickly took my drugs. And I came back. I was busy coming down um, from, uh, like I said, the previous day I had also used. So that morning I was desperate to go pick up. I was still busy coming down from the bend I had the previous two days. Um, and I was feeling horrible. And I was just, once an addict has drugs, he's very desperate to take it. And I rushed to the bathroom first thing when I got into the restaurant, the most private place I could go to use and to feel better about the come down. And what were you using at the time? I was using cat. Yes, the drug cat. Um, the previous days, I would say I was using a mixture about cat with, of cats and crystal meth, but the majority of the time it was cat. Okay, um, to carry on further, I then, after the waiter asked me what I wanted to drink, I gave her my order. I didn't even sit. Um, as I came back from the toilet, she actually assigned a place to me to sit inside. I sat down for a few seconds, but after taking the line of drugs and also walking from Silverton to the restaurant, it was hot. So I decided to sit outside, which I moved outside. Um, I know that a lot of people say it's close to the kiddies area. It was never my intent. As I moved outside to sit outside, I wasn't waiting for anyone. I never mentioned waiting for anyone. I was just alone and in my own state of mind, helpless. I didn't want to go home. I mean, I was supposed to be at work, busy fixing things with my manager, but instead I'm picking up drugs. I was even in my work clothes on that day. Um, I would say I went through, I drank and I drank, and I was very desperate to talk to somebody. Um, I saw a white guy walking from, if I'm not mistaken, his name is Johan. Um, I saw him walking from a distance away. I thought I noticed him because I stay in the area. I immediately approached him straight forward, thinking that it's a guy that I knew, but wasn't sure. And I used to, I used to know a lot of people that would wander the streets that were also drug addicts. So I approached him and I noticed that it's not the person, but just somebody, and I just approached him and asked him, um, if his name was, I forgot the name, but I made up an excuse of why I was approaching him. So I gave him some other name. Is his name not this? He said no. I asked him, can I speak to him? He said to me, I must accompany him at the dross if I want to speak to him. I said to him, I was already seated there. We moved into the bar area where we carried on drinking. And it got out of control pretty fast. I remember drinking a lot of shooters and disappearing in between intervals to go use uh, more and more and more drugs. And at one stage, he had... I think it was a family member of his. It was a woman and a young man that arrived. Um, they seemed very angry with him, um, telling him he shouldn't drink too much, telling us we shouldn't drink too much, as a matter of fact. And from there, it, it pretty much got very blurry. Conversation and things, I don't really remember a lot of it. I would, if, if, there's a lot of things that go through my mind when I think about what was said and what was done, but I can't actually state 
what was said and done. It, it later on became a blur. All I remember was um, at one interval, I wanted to go use again in the toilet. Now, the reason why I, th I know that I was in that toilet is because I remember sitting down using first. I remember specifically sitting in the female toilet. I remember that moment of entering the female toilet, and I remember closing the cubicle door, and I remember using my drugs, and I even had my beer glass with me in the toilet. Um, it's difficult to describe for me what happened at that moment. It's, it's one of the hardest things that I've ever had to, to say, especially with the press and the media around. It's very sensitive to me and it's something that breaks me every day. It's something that I have to live with every day. It's something that I can't take back. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, I would say at the time I didn't really care about anything. I was high for a few days, so nothing really mattered to me. Like I said, I was doing things with impulse, making decisions, not really caring about consequence. I guess I was angry and in that state I made a mistake and I intentionally went out in that moment with that encounter with that girl and I, and I intentionally did those things to her but my regret came to me too late. My regret came to me and I realized, I knew exactly in that moment what I was doing but I guess with my mental state, it's not that I wasn't aware of what I was doing, it was just that I was in a completely different mind state with the drugs. I couldn't think rationally. Like I said, consequence was nothing to me. It was, there was no emotion attached. There was no emotion. I was angry. I was full of hatred. I was in, I was in a tough, I was in a tough place in my life. What, what would the position have been if you were celibate? <laughs> As my grandma always says, me, Nicholas Nino, and me on drugs, we are two completely different people. Um, Sober-minded, I would never have done such a thing. Sober-minded, I wouldn't have done such a thing to anyone. Not even a little child. Never mind a little child. I couldn't even, I couldn't even get physical with anyone sober. I couldn't even get, I could get angry, but I wouldn't even say violent. All of my history of violence and fighting has been caused by drugs and alcohol. It's been part of my life, practically my entire life. Now, how would you like to fight the later you were consuming on that time? How were you trying to uh, fight for the victory you were conceiving on that day? I had no intention on paying. Like I said, everything was done impulsively without thinking of consequence. I just went. I didn't care about what was going to happen, happen later on in the day, as long as I could just drink. And at that moment in time, I guess, I was, like I said, I was in a completely different mindset. Well, so the evidence was that you didn't have any money? No, I had no money. You said earlier that you didn't have money. I think it's cold, but if you want to consider it, then it's cold. But 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 it's cold. Um, it depends. The first time I used, if you consider marijuana as a drug, was I was about twelve. Um, 
The first time I consumed it was with a bunch of older friends. But my first encounter with chemicals was with my mother. Um, I was 13 years old. Um, I was staying with my grandmother at the time. My grandmother had just allowed me... Uh, my grandmother has known my mom has been struggling with addiction her entire life. And my mom started, you know, showing signs that she wants to change and be a part of my life again. And my grand let me see my mom on weekends. And the one weekend we went, my mom, she was young when she gave birth to me, so she was always like the older sister to me. She's now 37. Um, at the time she gave birth to me, she was 15. Um, so... I would say we more had like a brother and a sister relationship and we I would often then start drinking with her and I had a friend over the one weekend his name um, okay I can't maybe mention his name but we were over that at my mom's house that weekend and we were drinking and it was a Sunday yeah it was a Sunday morning early it was about four o'clock five o'clock we were still going until the point that um, my mom saw that she couldn't take me back to my grandmother in this state and my friend, he was even worse. And she called both of us to her bedroom. And when we arrived there, we saw her with chopped lines of, 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 of at the time, I obviously didn't know, but it was cats. And she told us to take this, that it would sober us up and that we should never do it ever again. But she's only doing this as a once-off thing to help us sober up. After taking it, I must say I felt good and I felt my energy come back. I didn't feel, I felt like I could, like, you know, hold my pose when I went home to my grandmother and that nothing would be found out but my grandmother found out pretty much instantaneously when I got home that I was high. What was the reason for your mother to give you the cat? It was to sober up so that I could, um, so that my grandmother didn't know that I was drinking in excessive amounts of, or large amounts of quantities when I was at my mom's place. And after that incident, after the incident, I went out of my way to find the drug and to use it. Um, I pretty much fell in love with it instantly. I don't know why, I don't know, but to me in the beginning, as every addict would say, it's not a problem. It's just for fun and it's just for events and it's just for clubs. And that's what I, st that's what I stuck at at the beginning, you know, going to clubs with friends, using drugs. But then it quickly spiraled out of control and I found myself using in my own house. I found myself using alone, isolating using in my room. It started affecting relationships. Um, I think at the age of 16, I lost my first really, real, real, real true love. Her name, well, I can't, sorry, I can't mention her name once again. But I think about her a lot. And she had an abortion when, with my child when we were 16. And that was due to my drug use. The parents found out about the eventually went to the healing wings and the rehabilitation Yeah, that was later on. I was 17. I was grade 11. And after that, how were you? Uh, you... The first nine months in healing wings, the visits I received from my grandmother, looking upon myself, I felt much more proud of myself. I felt clean. I was still dealing with a lot of hatred and anger and going through counseling for a lot of deeper inner issues. But being drug-free was great at the time, I guess. Um, people were looking at me differently. My grandmother was, was looking at me as if she was proud of me for once. And I felt good about that at the time. It was an amazing feeling, being, being clean. <laughs> and um, I got out. I finished my eight-month period at the rehab. Um, they believed I was ready and fit to go out after eight months. And when I left, it was about three months later, I fell straight back into, into addiction, into using again. But it felt great being clean at the time. I fattened up, I was chubby, I was fit. I felt good. What was your relapse? Um, at the time, my mom, she was in Cape Town. They were homeless with my two younger brothers. the shelter <laughs> the shelter wouldn't let my brothers in because they were too young <sighs> so I remember receiving a phone call we were in church one Sunday and I remember receiving a phone call something just told me something is wrong it was my mom and I went out of the court out of the out of the church 
to take the phone call and my mom, she asked me, she sounded normal. She's like, hey boy, how are you doing? I haven't heard from you in a long time. And then it got emotional. She started telling me that um, she doesn't know what to do. They're on the streets in Cape Town. The homeless shelter weren't letting my brothers. And after telling this to my grandmother, my grandmother couldn't let that happen. My grandmother let them come back to stay with her. And we were all staying in the same house. And my relapse happened after I found my mom and them using again. And I told them, so you guys are not sharing. And we just ended up using together again. It wasn't even a day later my grandmother found out the same thing. She was very angry, but she couldn't kick. For the sake of the children, she didn't know what to do. She was in this tough situation. So she couldn't kick my mom out and she just didn't know what to do. Yeah, it was a couple of times. I do admit to using it. Yes. Um, I can, in a period of these 13 months, um, my lord, I could count them. It must have been less than 20 times that I've used. Say again, your, uh, my lord. Yes, I've had a couple of fallbacks whilst in prison, my lord.